We're now going to switch to a topic that we've never discussed here on Red Meat Radio. Uh, a topic that, uh, to a lot of people is, is fun to engage in, uh, but, uh, most people don't get chess very well. I have to admit that I play chess with my grandkids, uh, and I've played it as a young man growing up. Uh, but now we have here in Utah, uh, a, a world champion named Caden Troff. And he's right here on our show this morning. Welcome, Caden. Thank you. I'm going to switch mics and let you use this one. Okay. And we will, Todd and I will share this one since we only have two mics working today. Uh, so you just won the world championship in chess uh, in the 14 and under category. Yeah, I went, I went to Slovenia uh, and played in the World Youth Chess Championships and under 14 and won gold. Wow. I, I saw your, your photograph as they were giving you the award. I saw a video of that as Gary Kasparov, the world champion, uh, was giving you that award and you were draped in the American flag. That was, that really was inspiring. Uh, what we want to do is get inside your brain today and find out what it takes to win gold in a World Chess Championship. So let's start out with uh, how you got started. Uh, How old were you when you got started, and Um, tell us about that. I got started just by uh, watching my my dad and my brothers play. Um, It it really started when my dad was younger, because he he got involved with chess, and he, he enjoyed playing chess, but... Uh, as he got older and got married, he, he didn't really have anybody to play. So, you know, he, he started teaching his sons. And just as they, him and my older brothers were playing, I, I just kind of watched. And, um, when I barely turned three, uh, I just kind of said, you know, from watching, can I try? And three? Yeah, three. So I've been playing for 11 years. Um, and they just <laughs> like, you know, why not? And I sat down and, Played a game? At three. At three. You could barely talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, he said, can I try? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's incredible. So you think that wiring your brain at a young age like that was helpful in, in becoming a master? Um, I, I definitely think so, just kind of getting started early. But I wouldn't fully credit it to starting early. Okay, tell us what did make the difference? Um, I, I would say what, in the long run, makes the difference is how much time you spend. And, you know, when you start early, you can spend more time. Um, but it, it's just, you know, I practice um, six to seven hours a day. So I, I would definitely credit that to um, where I've gone. And it's definitely helped that I've had uh, 11 years to work. So on Malcolm Gladwell, right. in his book, Outliers... He says that the Beatles became famous because they had 10,000 hours of practice. Yeah. The uh, Bill, Bill Gates became famous and successful because he had more time on a computer than just about anybody. So that's what happened with you. So you, you gave at least 10,000 hours. If you're doing six hours a day, that's from, from age... I mean, when did you get serious giving that many hours a day? Um, I think I, I started kind of being more serious about chess around six and for a while I think I was doing about two hours a day uh, and then maybe hmm, I would guess around nine probably uh, around nine I started putting in four hours uh, and then I would say maybe a year or two or years after started putting in six hours. So what would you do for those six hours? Were you always playing live opponents? Were you playing um, on the computer? What were you doing? It, it really has switched over the years depending on what I'm trying to work on. Um, but generally, uh, what, I, what I was doing for a long time was in the more and Yeah, what I was doing for a long time, uh, I've kind of switched it now, but what I was doing for a long time was kind of um, studying openings uh, in the morning, working on my middle game uh, at night, and then playing uh, blitz games, live games every day at night. Um, now what I'm, I'm working a lot on my openings lately, uh, and then 
Um, that that usually I'll be on my computer looking over different lines, studying using the compu- like the chess engine since you know it's a lot stronger than me. Um, and I'll, I'll go through those lines, and then in the afternoon uh, I usually have homework from my coaches that I'll be working on, and that can range from writing down different players' games to analyzing my own games or reading a uh, book. Uh, and then at night, it, it's usually um, kind of just finishing up whatever I had earlier that day or earlier that week and pretty much just doing whatever I need to uh, at do, night. Do you play correspondence chess online? Um, one of the things I have been doing is... Uh, trying to play more training games, so mm-hmm. uh, finding other players uh, around the country uh, that are my friends that I can um, just get on the internet and play some long games with so I can have that experience because in Utah, uh, finding people around my rating is really hard. <laughs> and what is your rating? Um, your rating? My my United States rating, the USCF, is right now 2438. Okay. Um, the second that highest must be rated. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's pretty good. Um, but the the second highest rated in Utah uh, is twenty one uh, twelve or something like that. So in, in your age or uh, overall in Utah. So how is a rating done? Um, a rating y- you pretty much get a rating just by so you start off and you play other people in whatever tournament and then depending on your performance it will. Give and when you're first starting, it can jump a lot, like 400 points easily when you first start. Uh, but when you so is that by a judge r- watching you, or, uh, or it's, is it, it's whether you win or lose and what the rating is of the person yeah. you're playing, right? Yeah, it's done by how well you performed. So if you didn't perform well, you go down. If you perform your rating, you'll stay the same. Um, so pretty much, um, if I were to go up. 15 points, that's that's good. That that would be a good tournament. Uh, 30 points, that's a really good tournament. And, like, 50 points, that's just amazing. But after that, you, you usually don't go up um, more than 50 points in a tournament uh, unless you, you're first starting when you're jumping a lot. That's amazing. Well, um, so what is your favorite first move? Um, wh- when I'm white, I pretty much my... Yeah, entire life I, I played D4. Okay. Um, and that's considered more positional. I and just for closed. our non-chess expert listeners, tell us, you, you're moving which position where? You're moving the pawn in front of the queen two squares up. Okay. Yeah, and that that's considered um, a little more closed, a little more positional. If you uh, the, move the, the pawn in front of the king two squares, that's E4, that's the king pawn, that's generally more open, a little more crazy, a little more exciting. Um, but I, I've pretty much been playing D4, uh, queen pawn, uh, for pretty much my whole life. Okay. And I see a lot of players play like B, like B2, like they, they take the pawn in front of the, uh, the knight and they move it up just one. Do you, do you see that very often? Um, there are definitely openings like that. People, there's it, it ranges. You can pretty much play any first move, and it's considered uh, an opening. Yeah, I'm but, a four guy, so yeah, that's where I'm coming from. I'm um, a crazy, mix it up, like you said, <laughs> open. You know, transparent. a little more aggressive. You want to yeah. kind of kill your opponent. Yeah. Of course, I don't win very much, but I, I I play a lot of correspondence chess, so I just make I log on, make that one move. I usually have about six games going at a time, so a game might take me a week or so, maybe two weeks. But you know, I yeah. I think I would buckle under the pressure, especially I see those guys on TV like in New York where they have like they have to move and they hit the stopwatch and yeah. like the games like in five minutes. I don't think I would do very well with that. Have you played that 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 timed quick chess before? Uh, yeah, I've played uh, that quite a lot. You. Blitz uh, is usually about five minute, uh, five minutes for both sides. Uh, if you want to just have a lot of fun, not really trying to practice or anything, you can play one minute for each side. Wow! Um, and then that usually ends up with pieces being blown off the board yeah. and on the ground everywhere. And <laughs> so, tell us about this tournament in in Slovenia. Yeah. Uh, tell us what that was like and uh, what the what the procedure was for you rising through that uh, tournament? I mean, how long were the were the matches, and what what, what was the time 
frame that you had to make your next move? And tell us about what that looks like. Um, well, the the tournament was definitely not a quick tournament. It wasn't five minutes. It was um, an hour and a half for your first forty moves, and then after you make forty moves, you get another half an hour. Uh, and then every time you make a move, you get thirty seconds. That's called a thirty second increment. So generally, those games will last about four hours. Um, now, the biggest difference for me in this tournament than I would say, other other than it being 11 rounds, I, I other than this tournament, I don't play in a lot of 11-round tournaments, but the fact that this tournament was one game a day, um, that's not something you see in the U.S. a lot. What do you see in the U.S.? If, uh, is it shorter than that? It, it's usually about two games a day. So if you, it's usually about nine-round tournaments, uh, and you'll play those nine rounds in five days. Um, this tournament, you know, had 11 rounds, and you played those 11 rounds in 11 days. <laughs> so after a four-hour game, are you physically exhausted? Or tell us what, what a four-hour game takes out of you. Um, it, it takes a lot of energy. And uh, just because you're so focused, I, I found the biggest thing for me um, just after that four-hour game is usually I'm very hungry, but because I'm so focused, I don't eat a lot. Um, do you drink water? What, what do you do yeah, for our game? Y- you usually try and drink a lot of water. That's helped me a lot. Is you know, again, you, you're focusing so hard that you just don't think about things like water, and you're like, oh yeah, I do actually need to stay in the world and stay alive. Um, but the the four hour games just becomes just really exhausting because it's just some of the toughest mental work you can do, uh, and after these long tournaments you really just want to take a really long nap (laughs) are there bathroom breaks during that four hours um pretty much during your because you have a certain amount of time you can you know you can get up and walk around while your opponent's sinking you can go to the bathroom you can um the tournament slovenia you couldn't really leave the playing hall because they didn't want anybody cheating um cheating meaning getting help from somebody who's a, a a world class player? Is yeah, a world class player or uh, taking out electronic and putting it on the computer. Um, so you could y- recreate the game and then have the computer yeah. tell you what move is the best one. Yeah, but they, they had uh, bathrooms and they had uh, water in there for us, so we, we could pretty much just stay in the tournament hall and be just fine. So I've played enough chess in the past couple of years that I know right now my biggest weakness is a bishop all the way across the board. I just don't see him sometimes. I mean, do you have a weakness or what What obstacles like that have you had to overcome to reach the levels um, that you have? It's hard to say. It's more of a, a general thing. I don't know if I could Pinpoint. One thing I would say is I have uh, a little bit of a hard time beginning the tournament sometimes. Um, and I, I found as we get to those last few rounds in the tournament, uh, I, I usually am. My brain has been going. It's been just really focused. And um, th- those last few rounds are usually the, the best few rounds for me uh, as to the first few rounds, which I might not get off to as good of a start. As I'd like. So you kind of get in your groove a- after you do a few rounds. Yeah. Your, your brain gets uh, kind of more it's warmed up. Warmed up. Mm-hmm. 